Here, we will use geometric reasoning and construction to understand why elliptical orbits are so commonplace in our universe. For that, let us start with two bodies. One is a massive star like our sun and the other is a planet that is much lighter in terms of its mass. Let us assign the planet an arbitrary velocity. There are only two conditions. The direction is not pointing directly towards the sun or away from it and its magnitude lies within a certain range so that it is less than the escape velocity at the current location but it is also high enough to keep the body from spiraling towards the sun and eventually crashing into it. Under the circumstances, the planet is known to orbit in an elliptical path and Kepler's law says that the sun would lie at one of the foci. Let us now find that ellipse. Let us translate the problem from astronomy to geometry. So the sun would become a given focus, the planet would be a point on the ellipse and the velocity which is tangential to the path becomes a tangent to the ellipse at that point. So the problem is given a focus, a point on the ellipse and a tangent at that point, can we find the ellipse? Let us look at the property of ellipses that's going to be very handy in this search. And that is, if you have an ellipse which is having f1 as the focus, p as a point on it and the given velocity as a tangent, and if you attach flat mirrors from the outside of this ellipse, so these are flat mirrors and they are touching the ellipse, so it will touch only in one point. In other words, these mirrors are nothing but tangents. So our velocity vector can also be considered as one of these mirrors. Then if you keep a light source at the given focus f1, and draw some rays that are coming from the source and striking these mirrors at the point of tangency. Then the reflected rays are found to meet in a single point which happens to be the second focus. So a ray coming from one focus passes through the other focus as it gets reflected from a tangent at the point of tangency. So let us now apply it to the problem at hand. Here this will be our mirror this will be our source of light and we can take a ray of light striking the mirror like this and find the reflected ray which will point to the other focus. For that we need a normal at this point which can be drawn as a perpendicular to the given velocity and about this normal we can reflect this line, the incident ray to get the reflected ray. So here is our reflected ray. Of course this ray is only pointing to the focus but uh, we don't know where exactly on this ray lies the focus. To locate the second focus on this reflected ray another property of ellipse comes very handy and this is the property which helps us in fact plot an ellipse. Uh, what we have here is uh, a set of two pins mounted on a sheet of paper and around that we have thrown a loose piece of string and uh, the string has some slack which is taken up by this pencil and keeping it taut like this the pencil is then moved and uh, it is known that an ellipse results uh, as a part of this exercise. Now if you look closely then there are two segments of uh, these strings connecting the pencil to the two pins. So it is like two line segments connecting a point on the ellipse which is a pencil to the two foci, the pins and the sum of these two distances is going to remain constant because it is a string, it is not a rubber band. And that is the property of ellipse, that if you take a point on it and connect it to the two foci, then the sum of the lengths of these two line segments is constant. And that constant is equal to the length of the major axis. Let's use this. Here we already know the distance of p from one focus. So if we can find the major axis, we can subtract this distance to get the distance of the second focus on this line. Here is a formula from mechanics that will help us get the semi-major axis. In this formula, we have v, the velocity of the orbiting object, m, the mass of the primary body, g is the universal gravitational constant, and r is the current distance between the two bodies, 60 in this case. So plugging in these values, we can find A, the semi-major axis of the orbit, and then we can just double it, subtract 60 from it to get the distance of the second focus. So thereby we can locate the focus. Suppose that distance was 45. Uh, join the two foci now, uh, the distance between them turns out to be 75 in this case here. So 60 plus 45, 105 is the length of the entire major axis from which 75 is already here. So the remaining distance, 30, can be split in two and plotted like this, 15 and 15 on either side. 
Then take the perpendicular bisector of this major axis. Uh, on it, we are uh, hoping to find the minor axis. So for, to get that, take F2 as the center, semi-major axis as the radius, and cut an arc on the perpendicular bisector, like this. And then just connect this point uh, to the center to get the semi-minor axis. We can plot the entire ellipse like this. So here you will remember we had started with a pretty arbitrary position of our orbiting body and even the velocity was chosen uh, except for two minor conditions in an arbitrary manner. And yet it resulted in an elliptical orbit. So elliptical orbits seem to cover a large range of possible positions and velocities and directions and so on. And therefore they are so universal. But don't take my word for it will actually start with the same body in the same position moving in the same direction but speed it up a little bit and see if that too gives us an elliptical orbit and if so what is the relation between those two ellipses. Let us start from this phase where we were locating the second focus on this line and this formula suggests that higher the velocity longer is the major axis. So this line over here that we had drawn will be having an extension of kind. So suppose this is the position of the new uh, F2. Then like before we'll be joining the two foci, uh, finding the total length of these lines that is a major axis, uh, extend it on both sides half, half and half, uh, draw the minor axis using the same construction that we had before and then knowing the major and minor axis we'll plot the ellipse. Now if you look at these two ellipses then they are sharing this point with each other and not just this point but they also have a common tangent. So if you zoom into that area you would notice that the two ellipses are uh, not just meeting at that point intersecting but they are tangential and therefore share a common tangent. So this suggests that for a given position and a direction of motion there are infinitely many possible elliptical orbits which share this point and are all tangential to each other there.